Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really lovely gift bag. But first of all, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody who has wished me a congratulations on Facebook and my blog, um, Instagram, all like the social media platforms because on Wednesday I announced that I have been chosen to join the Trim Craft design team for 2018-2019 and I am so so happy. I just yeah I'm I'm absolutely ecstatic. You know how much I love Trim Craft. I use their products all the time and they would like me to join the team and yeah create so it's just brilliant, absolutely amazing. So thank you to everybody. I've received an overwhelming amount of comments and messages um, and it's just, yeah, it's really lovely. I feel very humble right now. So I thought I'm gonna make this gift bag and this is using the Trim Craft Let's Celebrate paper pack, which again, I love and I've been using for a few months now. This one is kind of evolved a little bit. I was looking back and I love my, um, that fake, fake wood gift bag did I call it you know the one anyway with these kind of stick um, handle details and I was just playing around I thought how can I make this look different and this is what I've done and I really really like this one I'm not sure what to call it yet maybe like a I don't know multi-loop gift bag because these are all little loops that you then th thread this through um, stick bag just doesn't sound quite good anyway I don't know now it all folds flat so again I've done it so that you just fold in the sides there so it's nice and easy to store and then basically you just open this piece up here and it slides through well as you open it it will just open itself so let me just pop that back open again and you can see there how it looks and it is really roomy it's two pieces of 12 by 12 I've tried to balance it and maximize you know the space and um, yeah I really like it it's just another take another odd looking well not odd I think it looks really quite pretty actually but you know what I mean it's just unusual there we go that's the word I use a lot I've made my lovely little tassels that I like doing I haven't I'm not going to show you how to make these I've got a tassel tutorial I'll link that up here so you can just follow that um, these how to make these I will quickly show you but again if you want to distress and do all that kind of stuff I'll also link in that other tutorial which has kind of got that similar look to it but yeah that's what we're going to make today so like I said all nicely folds flat so um, I've gone ahead and done loads because what I'm going to do this time is show you on a template because the paper I'm using is just too busy to show up all the score lines on camera. So I've gone ahead and already, already prepared it and then I will go through it now with a template. So I've got all these bits and pieces here which I'm going to talk through as we go because I think it kind of, yeah, we just stick it with it that way because it's, it's not hard as I always try to make all my tutorials easy to follow but there are lots of steps to this one just to make sure you get them all right but these are the two that I've done so that's how it kind of looks you can see here these are those bits that we're going to feed through that kind of stick um, the rest of it's pretty standard kind of gift bag um, scoring so those of you that make a lot of gift bags you'll, you'll probably whiz through it anyway um, that's the paper pack let's celebrate yay <laughs> Um, I'm again literally down to I think I've got about eight sheets left now and there were 40 48 yeah 48 so I think I've given that one a good yeah I, I can confidently say I've, I've used that one well okay so you're going to need two pieces of 12 by 12 um, and what you want to do is if you've got directional paper make sure it's up in the right way right at this point because we're going to be doing our side um, score line. So first of all, so what I'm going to do is mark every score line. Once I've told you it, I'm going to then highlight it in black, just so I know that I've gone through everyone with you. So obviously you don't need to do this, but you'll be doing this on your nice paper, or what you're going to use for your gift bag. So again, make sure it's directional, it's facing the right way up. So your first score line is going to be at three and at eleven and a half. Okay, so three and eleven and a half. Then rotate it, and you're going to score at three and ten and a half okay so three and ten and a half then you want to score at four and a half on the piece that's going to be the, on the front so let me grab the gift bag this piece here right you just want to score at four and a half just down to that score line here so in my case this black line but you'll have a score line there for the back piece you want to score at four and a half all the way down 
So on one piece you're just going to score that four and a half just to this marker. On the other piece you're going to score it four and a half all the way down. Okay, so that four and a half inch line, like I said, one all the way down, one just to there. But that will allow you to be able to fold it flat. If you don't want it to fold flat, then don't add that. And I'll tell you the other ones not to add either. Okay, then rotate back again. Okay. And if you want it to fold flat, you want to score at one and a half all the way down past that score line and down to this second score line here which was that four and a half inch score line that we just done okay so that's if you want it to fold flat one and a half all the way down to there then what you're going to do is score at four four and a half five and five and a half all down to that first score line there and then nine nine and a half ten ten and a half again down to that first score line there Okay, so right now that is all the score lines that you should have on both your pieces. One will have the line just to here and on your other piece it will not have that line there. Everything else though will be the same. Then what you want to do is rotate it back again onto this side and just score at nine just down to that first score line. I could have told you that when we done the four and a half and ten and a half but I'm just trying to keep it simple. So at nine just down to that second score line there. I'm just going to hold that there and you can kind of freeze frame and just check that that's where all your score lines are. But remember if it's folding flat you'll have one piece all the way through and one piece with just the half and then this score line down here. If you don't want it to fold flat don't add this and don't add this one. Okay hopefully that's all okay for you guys. So now I'm going to get rid of my scoreboard now again, if it's folding flat on both the pieces that you have, where you've got this one and a half inch score line that we've scored down here to that four and a half inch line, you just want to do a little triangle score. So just score from that point there down to this one here. So within this rectangle, just from that line down to that point, and then this one down to that. And again, that is just going to allow us to fold. Okay, so that's now where we are. So you'll have two pieces. So now we can start cutting. Again, I'm going to cut into this one because it's easier for you to see. So first of all, I'm going to work along the bottom. This is your top with all of these score lines. And all you want to do is cut up this one here. And cut up this one here. And then we can remove that one completely. Okay, and then with this one here, I'm just going to take off some little wedges from each side, like so. And then with this one here, just on the bottom of that one, I'm just going to take a little wedge out as well. So that's how it should look. Okay, then rotate it this side. So what we've just cut is on our right hand side, and you are going to cut right the way across this one here and then all the way down that one there. So you're just cutting those four squares out. Okay, that's the corner. So we don't need any of that. That then will bring you now so we've got this side and this is where we want to be cutting next. So all you want to do for this bit is cut down every single one of these score lines. Okay. Then when you get to this end one here, you can actually just cut that whole piece out, like so, okay? And then cut this piece out here. If I flip it round, so that's what we've done. So now I've, I'm left with these three and this large piece, okay? So just remove all of that so you've got these three and that large piece. Then what you want to do is this large piece, just fold it forward or back, but just kind of burnish that line and it will make it easier for you to get your scissors in and really neatly you want to remove that whole piece. If you want to use your cutting knife and your um, cutting mat for that you can because I know some people find that a bit easier. You may find now what you want to do is where we've got these three we're going to remove the middle one so you might just want to use your cutting knife just to remove the middle ones like so. 
Okay, so that is now what we should have. Now another bit that I forgot to add in, just grab your scoreboard and on this side here we have scored, we've done this nine inch score line just to here. Okay, we've done that nine inch score line just to there. But we actually need to take out this little bit here at nine inches. So just flip the card over, this is an old piece of scrapbooking, and just put a little notch just a little mark on the card that you can see. If you want to use a pencil mark, you can do. And then basically all you want to do, as you can see, there's my little mark there. I'm just going to cut just to that bit there, that score line, okay? And then just remove that last piece there, okay? So that is now what you should have. Or well, you should have two of these. One will have the fold right through, one will just have it up to here, okay? Now you want to burnish. Now the easiest way to do that is just fold all these straight lines. So that one on your back piece you can fold that whole one. And that's it. So just those two actually. And then on this side it would be that one, that one. Now this is all cracking because this isn't for 3D crafting so and that's why I use it for rough. Okay then with this one here if you fold it up and as you fold it up, it will start to bend on that where you've scored those these two triangle score lines. Just bring it over like so. Okay, see what I've done there? So fold and fold. And that way you can really burnish in those score lines and it will give you a nice corner. And then you can see if that bit goes underneath, there is one side of our bag. Okay. Then another little thing that we can do just to kind of help with putting it together is these bits here very carefully just curl them just with your bone folder or a ruler just curl them like so okay so now that's what you should have again I will leave that there just so you can freeze the frame okay so now I'm going to move on to my actual proper pieces because I'm going to start putting it together so this is that pattern paper. I just think it would have just been a bit too busy for you. Now you'll see here that I've cut these on an angle. It's entirely up to you if you want to do that. So again if I just revert back to my template, all I've done is from on the right hand side where you've got the um, half inch tab, pop your scissors right into that corner and just take that whole triangle off up to there. Okay. So again on this side, if I turn it up this way and pop my scissors in there, if you want to draw out a ruler and a you know a pencil line, then fine, and do like so. So again, if I just move those bits on my board, can you now see now oh, I've got those two sloped sides? But it's entirely up to you. It does look nice with them in, and you can also cut them off when it's all put together. So if you want to just leave it for the minute and wait till you've put it together, then that's fine. Okay, so next we want to start popping it all together. So I've already put my red tape on this. You can use wet glue, I just have my red tape to hand, so, and I just wanted to get this all prepared. So I've got my, oh, remove all my backing there. And then basically you just want to line up this bottom score line where you've got these two bits with the other one. So I'm just lining up the bottom score line. And hopefully those stripes will line up as well, just about. There we go. Make sure that's all nice and stuck down, like so. Then flip the whole thing over, fold this one in. I'm going to remove my backing again. This is when you'll add any wet glue. You want to just pop it onto that, again, that tab, and then fold this one over. Now, you, should, you could just lie that down completely flat, but I'm just going to, I always like to just hover it over just to make sure that that's pretty good. If all your scoring and your cutting's all correct, then it will lie nice and flat, like so. Okay, so the front is the piece that doesn't have that score line through there. If I flip this over, you can see that score line just about. It's actually right on that pink um, stripe, um, but it's there. So what we're gonna do is Pop. I'm going to fold this one down first, then I fold in my sides, and then I fold down the front. And that way, everything's concealed, and when you look inside, you've got a nice base. Whereas if you, a lot of people fold those in, 
and then the back and that one and then when you look inside I mean this is a real pattern paper you can't really notice it but you've got these two bits here and they're just I don't like it so again it's down to personal preference but I prefer first of all sticking up that back one so you can use double sided tape if you want I'm going to use my wet glue and just put a bead of glue all the way around the edges and then a bit inside pop down the two side bits they will all stay down once I apply some pressure inside just pop some more glue back over the tops of those and then pop down that front and flip it over and just grab a ruler and then just go through and make sure that's all nicely stuck down what you can do is if you just push the back where that score line is make sure these bits are in put your finger kind of at the top of the triangles on the side push that in and it will all go flat okay you can kind of just lie it down there now if you want to decorate you might want to put a nice big circle with happy birthday or something there then that will look great as well but now that's how we have it so next we need to make our little kind of stick detail and these are going to go like so and then these little bits are going to kind of loop around and hold it in place i think it looks really cool so to make one of these you need a piece that is eight and a quarter i think it was just the default a4 uh, width so it's eight and a quarter by one inch you want two pieces I'm using the craft card because again I like that wood effect I'm not distressing these like the other ones but I am going to do the same kind of um, folding in a sense or rolling and basically what I'm doing is just starting to roll it but I'm breaking down all the fibers so this will work with any good quality thick cardstock okay now this is 300 GSM for this craft card but slightly lower than that will be fine as well but if you go too kind of thin it just it, it, yeah it will end up just kind of going flat like squashing but can you see them just slowly bringing up each piece and I'm just softening the card basically and I can feel it breaking and more and more of it um, is kind of lifting as I work around it okay so I've done all of it now and then I can just literally start rolling the whole thing together now mine are what are they um, quarter of an inch in diameter once it's rolled but basically you just want to make sure it will fit inside here which I'll do next um, so before I stick that down let me just show you what to do with this so basically with each piece just want to open it up and I'm just popping a little bit of glue just at the bottom just ab sorry just above the score line see where I'm putting my glue there okay like so and then basically you just want to without folding it in half you want to kind of just press it against that still keeping it still see I've still got that shape that curved shape because that's what our little kind of stick is going to then feed through so that's why it needs to stay you know quite thin so yeah the thinner you get this the better and then if I go along do the next one there just put a bit of glue curl them a bit more if you need to if you think it's going to fold in half I mean if it does it's not the end of the world because the stick will kind of bring it back into that kind of um, circular or tubular, tubular um, shape okay so don't worry too much if it does go completely flat but can you see there again the shape that I've got and then if I just open that a little bit more this one will then just slide through like so and they can still move around but it's got a nice it's nice and secure in there okay now what you can do is fiddly but you could pop, pop the stick in so say actually leave that in there like so make sure when it's in you've got an even amount hanging out that side and that side but you could then wrap that around pop the glue on wrap it around while it's in there and stick it if you're worried that you might make this too wide all right so there are ways to do it but I because I've made it I guess I know exactly what I'm doing but um, 
if you you know a bit worried that you might you know not get it into the the gaps then maybe do it that way so I'm just going to go and get all of these little kind of loops looped up <laughs> okay so now they're all done can you see they've all got that kind of looped effect they need to be made bigger those ones they just push down on the top but now I can feed that through and then all I'm going to do is add a little bit of glue on the two outer ones just to hold the stick in place open that last one up there there we go twist it around so you don't see the join and that's how that one will look okay so back to this piece here so all I'm going to do now is add some glue on the one that's kind of rolled inside like so looks like a bit like a cinnamon stick <laughs> and then just bring that one round and just stick it down what I found as well is you get some tweezers and kind of hold them at the end there just to kind of you know get it to the shape you want and then you can also measure and make sure that you've got that at that kind of half and um, quarter inch diameter that I mentioned earlier okay and then if you just roll it like a rolling pin on the side where the glue is that will obviously make sure that it's sticking down but also keep it within that nice kind of tube shape okay so now I've got that one all done you should have two so again I'm just going to feed that one through the other side okay so they're now both in place and then all I've done is got a little bit of my wet glue on the end of these little um, kind of glue sticks just pop glue on they're good for if you're using any intricate dies but I always use them for um, yeah just if you've got like a little bit of paper sticking up at the edge or something but if you just pop that underneath the top there and kind of lift that up just hold it there it would just kind of tack it in place you know you don't need to go crazy with the glue um, but it will just kind of help it or like I said you can hold your as you're putting this kind of through and you want to do each one separately you could put a little bit of glue under it then twist it over and stick it down so whatever works you know best for you when you come to do this it's I would say it's a, a bit fiddly you know um, but it's you know it is lovely another thing you can do as well again it's all about kind of putting your twist on it but there is no reason why you could just cut straight along here and not have these bits and have them as separate pieces so if you imagine this is going to be for my strap but if you imagine you cut them to I don't know two inches long and then stick them so they're kind of coming down here and maybe put a little you know embellishment on them and make a feature of them so you could actually do them separate so you know have a play around with it and, and kind of find what works for you like so okay so I have also got three pieces you only need one but I really don't know what color I want to use and this is to have our closure so this piece is going to go through the middle here and then come over the front so I've got this orange which pulls out the orange in the plants I've got this kind of turquoise colour mm, not so keen on that or I've got white well, I'm thinking the orange I've got the orange straps as well yeah I think the orange that one's just come out I don't think I fat I forgot to glue that one I think so with this piece here I'm going to stick with the orange you just want to just again just to kind of help you but just curl it now you might want to decorate some more on this, I'd say decorate it now, it's a bit easier when you're, it's not attached. And then you just want to pop some glue on the inside, about three quarters of an inch to an inch, like so. And then you want to make sure that you're sticking it onto the back where that score line is. So there's my folded score line and then I'm just going to kind of feed that through and just stick it down. In fact you don't need to feed it through, just feed it through the first one and just stick it in place so that you've got it in the middle so you've got an even gap there I've come down, I think I've come down further actually on the back than I did on the other one, that's uh, one and a half I'd say, I'd say one really is what you want to do, I've come down a bit further but I don't think that's going to cause too much of a problem no, I'm just going to have a shorter bit at the front but I would, depends, if you want more at the front then stick it higher, if you want less and you might want a longer one, you might want one a piece that comes all the way down here again, it's entirely up to you 
Then to just stick that in place, I've got some Velcro dots here. So I'll take off my pairs, feed it through, and pop one under there. This is so sticky. These are the Velcro branded Velcro, <laughs> so the, the proper brand, and they are so sticky. Okay, so just put two and they're joined together. The, the pair is on there, so this is sticky on this side. And then basically I'm gonna kind of just put it together as if it was closed. So it's flat. In fact, if I put the whole, fold the whole thing flat and then make sure you fed it through both of your, so it's under both the sticks. And then just bring it down. So I'm going to line it up with that pink line. There we go. Okay. And then you can just undo the Velcro, make sure they're all stuck down nicely. And just open that back up again. And then we can add the handles. So I've got two strips here of whatever length really you want. So the one on the bag I showed you before was 12 inch length, purely because that was from the scrap from the pack. This time I've done um, from a piece of A4, so this is 11 and three quarters ish by half an inch. Okay, and as always with your handles, put your, fi put your finger and thumb like so, so your thumbs are facing up, bring it towards you, and that's how you really want to stick them down. So for this case, I'm sticking on the front about three quarters of the way. A bit too much glue there. Let's take a bit of that off. There we go. And then I'm sticking it, that one keeps coming off. There we go. I'm sticking it behind one of the kind of loops because they're exactly half an inch. So let me just stick this down and you can see where I've gone with it. Because it sits directly behind it needs like nice and neatly. So you can see there, so I've stuck it right on the back of that one. See, you can't see it from this side, but it's stuck. And then with my thumb on the top, bring that one round, and that's going to stick now behind that one. So it's the inside loops. So again, a bit of my glue and just hold them in place. Okay, and that's how the handle looks. And I like that it's behind it. So just do that again on the back. Okay, so now again, I'll just feed my fastening, just so that's done back up. And there's your bag. It's got kind of a bit of a, a vintage, there's a particular style, I can't put my finger on it, I'm sure it'll come to me. Anyway, then I've got my tassels. So like I said, I'll share the links to how you make these ones. And then I'll just feed those through. These are, one of them is, let me just tell you the length actually because then you'll be able to get them the same. So one is three inches and one is two and a quarter because I wanted them to kind of, you know, one kind of sit higher than the other. Um, and also I've got room there to add a gift tag if I want to as well. But there we go, isn't that gorgeous? Really like oriental, there we go. It does, it looks like one of those Oh, I've seen them before. I'm going to find a picture and I have to put it in my blog. I know exactly what this is now and it's just come to me. <laughs> so there we go. There's the other one. I'll keep that one flat just so you can see them there. Push that out of the way. And there you have it. How gorgeous. I really like them. Yeah, love them. So I hope you do too. You always like my handbags and especially if they're fold flat ones as well because then you can store them all away. So until next time, as always, if you've enjoyed today, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.